Lily Nussbaum. And please give a big round of applause for her as she comes out here. One in six women and one in 33 men are victims of sexual violence. So I'm sure that there are people in this room other than me who have experienced that kind of trauma. And if you haven't, I want you to take a second to imagine what that would be like. Because then it gets harder in the courtroom. And a lot of times, the courtroom isn't a choice, though a lot of perpetrators don't end up there. A lot of times, it's an issue of safety, and it's a civil courtroom rather than a criminal one. So in the civil courtroom, the end goal is a protection order, not jail time. And it's a room full of strangers who are hearing your story, not just a jury. And there are no shield laws that can keep people from asking about your sexual history. And there are no attorneys appointed to either party, so money becomes even more of an issue. So at this point, it seems kind of hopeless because the criminal justice system isn't quite up to par and Title IX at colleges and universities is getting better, but it's not quite there. But it can get kind of worse because like I said, there aren't attorneys appointed. So then the perpetrator is the one questioning the victim and they're the one asking the questions like, well, didn't you ask for it? Weren't you drinking? And as a survivor, I know that I already ask myself questions all the time, and that would be so much worse. So there has to be some way that the legal system addresses this. And there kind of is. There's a buzzword that they use, which is trauma-informed. And there are a lot of trauma-informed actors in the legal system. There... So first, there are lawyers who are the ones who directly interact with survivors. And they should definitely be trauma-informed, but they can take continued legal education on copyright law as a divorce attorney and vice versa. So that's not really being trauma-informed. Um, judges should also be trauma-informed, especially in the civil courtroom where they're the ones mediating and ultimately making a decision. But they have judicial trainings that aren't required, and even if they go, they don't have to listen. And then as far as first responders, they really should be trained in how to respond to sexual assaults, but the police officers aren't really trained to respond to that sort of thing. And the first response is honestly what makes all the difference in going forward in a case. So... There, especially with turnover then in the legal system, there are just a lot of moving parts and a lot of people with a lot of different experiences that make it really hard for everything to match up in a way that really supports survivors. So thinking back to like how it would feel to be traumatized in the first place, think again about how it would feel to be re-traumatized again and again by a system and by people who are supposed to be supporting you. And then it's, the question is how we can help. Because there are so many people in this room right now, and it seems like there should be some way that we can make a difference if all of us helped. So, the first thing is honestly to listen. Because of all those legal actors, the ones that aren't talked about are the friends, the family members, the classmates, the ones who hear the stories, and who can be the first responders instead of police officers. And what we need to do is we need to listen to those stories and not dismiss them and believe them because that makes a huge difference in telling someone that their story is valid. Because like as much as going through policy and making shield laws implemented in civil courts and all of that stuff can help, the change needs to happen on a societal level because we live... <laughs> We live in a society that doesn't believe or support survivors, and that needs to change. And if we start to believe survivors now, then that can really start to make a difference. And that can trickle down to children, who are really the ones who need to learn that no means no, and that yes means yes, and that their stories are valid. because eventually they'll grow up and they will be the police officers and they'll be the lawyers and they'll be the judges and they will be the family members, the co-workers and the friends who are listening to these stories.
Thank you so much.